exciting. We are looking forward to these new changes. Is there anything else that you can tell us about that is coming to Jorvik soon? There is a lot going on right now. We are full speed on making new things for Star Stable. Outside of the normal weekly updates that normally contain new clothes, equipment, new races and quests, we are also working on adding new features to the game and preparing to open new areas. The areas that are coming next are Jorvik Stables and the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur. We don't know when we will open them yet. We are also preparing new exciting game features that will enhance the gaming experience further for all our great players. Thanks for the interview. Thank you. Hello everyone, it's Kitty. And welcome to a new documentary. Today is a very special day, in particular. Today we celebrate the nine-year anniversary of one of the most special and unique areas in Star Stable Online. The Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur, most commonly known as Dino Valley. This area introduced a very distinctive approach to Star Stable's once annual tradition of releasing new places for us to explore. I believe for that reason alone, it deserves to be celebrated amongst the community on its ninth birthday. The story of Dinosaur Valley is much like an unfinished book. So let's start from the very beginning. Making my way through the hollow woods for the first time as a new player was a feeling that cannot be replicated. Discovering Veildale and truly being able to see Jorvik's hidden gem of a village where the Keepers of Aiden reside. With every town you discover on the island, you are requested to build reputation with the townspeople. That means humping them out with racetracks, stable chores, and making sure the inevitable wicked forces at play stay at a safe distance from the horses. Once you arrive in Veildale, you are requested to do tasks along the lines of what was previously mentioned. Although, this time around, we are not paralyzing scarecrows or trapping vicious shadows in a vacuum, thankfully. They just have one simple question. Has the snow melted? Every week, we were given a daily quest with Claire, the stable girl of Veildale. Titled, Has the Snow Melted? It would require us to venture up the steep mountain road, occupied beside Veildale stables, to check if the abundant mounds of snow blocking the entry point of the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur had melted. In exchange for Jorvik shillings and reputation progress for Veildale, a requirement for unlocking Dinosaur Valley. Since this is a mere daily quest, the snow would always remain in the exact same spot every time the quest is received, but it was foreshadowing what could be coming in the future. One major catalyst to the grand opening of Dinosaur Valley was meeting Nick Stoneground, the famous adventurer who is notorious for traveling the globe in his hot air balloon. Nick had landed in the Everwind Fields, 
The quest was quite hard to miss as his hot air balloon took up a lot of space. And in the height of wild role plays in everyone fields, you could not ignore it. He introduces himself, claiming that he is going to begin an expedition beyond Veildale in the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur. And as all NPCs in Star Stable do, requests your help to detach the moorings from his hot air balloon. Once you fulfill his wishes, he bids you farewell and leaves you with a piece of dialogue that stuck with the community for a while. See you, my friend. I'm off to the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur. Who knows? Maybe we'll meet again soon. As he floats eastward into the horizon, players are left confused. What is the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur? After one of Star Stable's most successful years, 2013 ended on a high note. We were reflecting back on all that Star Stable gave us that year. From riveting story quests, three new horse models, to rebuilding the Harvest County's bridge and exploring Southern Yorvik. It was time to begin planning for 2014. Over the summer, we were gifted with a brand new horse breed. Star Sable's first ever draft horse, the Irish Cobb. Originating from the United Kingdom, they marched into Yorvik and our hearts with their fuzzy hooves. This horse was quite revolutionary. And at the time, we did not realize that this horse breed would be foreshadowing their next release in the fall. On August 27th, Star Stable presented the North Swedish horse. This breed was very close to the Irish cob, yet there was one element distinguishing the two. The North Swedish horse debuted with a brand new feature, cold tolerance. What would we need that function for? Star Stable kept the articles very vague, making sure not to spoil any surprises. In the following weeks, clues about the upcoming area were sprinkled throughout social media and the game itself. Nearly two years after his first interview about the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur, game director Marcus Torell was invited to another conference about the upcoming area. The transcript was written in a news article on Wednesday, October 22nd, 2014. Alongside the release of two new North Swedish horse variations, with a helpful hint at the bottom of the picture. New little North Swedish cuties. They're going to be even more useful than you might think in the future. Marcus explained how this area was going to introduce a new function amidst the vast amount of quests. Archaeology! the ability to mine for fossils in select spots of the valley. He also elaborated on the cold tolerance feature, claiming that horses in Dinosaur Valley are greatly affected by the sheer cold, and that the latest horse breed to make its way onto Jorvik, the North Swedish horse, was best suit for the journey. Meaning that the North Swedish horse was the only breed at the time that could accelerate to a full gallop in Dinosaur Valley. Screen caps of the area were also teased in this article. Some of the first visuals we had ever seen of Dinosaur Valley. Without a doubt, the pictures captured the essence of the forgotten, freezing crater blanketed in everlasting mist we were told about. The anticipation intensified, as the team were becoming more generous with the sneak peeks. On November 5th, we were teased with an anonymous photo of a man in a tunic. We've seen him before, and we'll see him some more, wrote Star Stable. The Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur was arriving any day now. One of Star Stable's biggest creators at the time was a teenage girl from Sweden named Alice Winterbell. She was one of the game's most original players. 
as she has revealed in her videos that she began playing Star Stable Online a week after its release in 2011. Alice took her Star Stable career to a whole new level when she started posting YouTube videos of what she does in-game, beginning a lineage of Star Stable players creating videos on YouTube. She quickly grew a massive following over the years, claiming her title as Star Stable's first ever influencer. The developers behind Star Stable Online recognized her hard work and dedication towards the game as her content organically drew in a lot of people to register an account in the hit Swedish horse game. On November 15th, 2014, Alice Winterbell, alongside a handful of other great Star Stable players, were invited to the game's headquarters in Stockholm, where Alice and the other lucky visitors had the opportunity to explore Dinosaur Valley a few days before the grand release. Alice was chosen to direct the long-awaited trailer for Dinosaur Valley, given her catalog of videos she has produced. This collaboration paid off, as the trailer accumulated over 200,000 views. The cinematography was so immersive, it instantly raised hype for what was arriving in less than 96 hours. Less than two days until D-Day, Star Stable released brand new public information about the characters we are to meet as we dive into the storyline of Dinosaur Valley, giving us a clue on what to expect when we arrive, accompanying each new character with a little description of what their occupation is and why they are in the valley. At this point, the entire community was pretty stoked for Wednesday. As players were lining up outside the familiar mountain of snow, eagerly waiting out the final hours, the team were working attentively at making sure that this launch is flawless. And luckily, the operation was a success. The Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur was open to the public on November 19th, 2014. As listed in the article, the launch of Dinosaur Valley came with over 200 new quests. New clothes, two new factions, and a brand new race that you have a hand in building. The debut of Dinosaur Valley lived up to the hype we carried for over two years. The amount of enriching storytelling that came from the quests on week one alone was overwhelming. As I had mentioned previously, this area was and still remains the most unique place in the game. There is an exciting charm to exploring every corner this area has to offer. The next day, Star Stable released another article stating that yesterday had been the best day they ever had for the game, thanking us for our patience and positivity on this journey to the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur. They were so grateful, they offered us even more sneak peeks of what is to come the following week, including the introduction of Dinosaur Valley's indigenous people explaining their purpose in the valley as well as their background. And best of all, their gift to us once we have earned their trust and alliance. The Norwegian Fjord Horse. The team explicitly revealed the release date for these uniquely gorgeous horses, arriving December 10th, 2014. It goes without saying, they made it incredibly difficult not to enjoy being a star stable player around this time. We had the opportunity to meet the Calters for the first time on November 26th. They are described as an enigmatic mountain folk that possess a rich history. In this article, Star Stable heavily stresses that you will want to build your reputation with these fascinating people through tasks they enlist you in daily. Foreshadowing the trust you must earn from the Coulters in order to purchase one of their beautiful fjord horses. The daily tasks that they would ask you to complete include finding 
miscellaneous artifacts scattered throughout the valley, such as call stones and ice and thistles. In exchange for over 85 XP granted towards their faction. If you happen to find yourself adventuring through the valley, you may stumble upon other little items highlighted with golden sparkles. Much like the recycling mechanic we engage in every day on Star Stable Online. These items include a white fur pelt, ice and pearl, ice and berry, a snow weasel, and an ice and chestnut. You can exchange these items for 15 XP towards the faction anytime with Sedna. Alongside the beginning of the Christmas celebrations in Jorvik, on December 3rd, we were introduced to archaeology in Dinosaur Valley. A function you can voluntarily participate in every day to scavenge for ancient fossils or relics in exchange for some pretty sweet prizes. The lesson in archaeology began with Stone Ground Expedition member Frank Einstein, right after we reversed his zombification. After hearing about Frank's backstory and how he ended up in the valley alongside his sister Elsa, we are gifted his old pickaxe to help support us on our journey into archaeology. This daily errand came across as tedious to some, but I believe it can be quite enjoyable and rewarding. Not to mention, I like how it is not a necessity to advance in the game in any way. You are able to trade your archaeological finds with Professor Yura, Jorvik's most renowned paleontologist. At long last, the day we had all been waiting for finally arrived. December 10th, 2014. The Coulters officially put their precious Fjord horses out for sale to all of the players who had vowed to take good care of them. The Fjord horse has to be one of the most well anticipated horse breeds in Star Stable history. With good reason. The way Star Stable designed their model makes them stand out from every other horse they had released up until that point. Their stubby legs, spiky mane, and unique markings on their coat makes for a really interesting horse. They were also the first horse to be sold with a set of tack. When you purchase any variation of the fjord, they would come with an exclusive cultic bridle, saddle, and blanket. Did you know that up until the release of the American Quarter Horse in April of 2015, the Fjord was considered the fastest horse in the game. This horse was suited for every player's interest in Star Stable. The Fjord horse also came at the affordable price of 780 Star Coins, which was very cheap for a full speed horse. That is unless you were purchasing the quote unquote turbocharged Fjord a variant that came at level 10 for the price of 1,425 star coins. And as you can imagine, these cuties were tolerant to Dinosaur Valley's harsh cold, given their strong build and durable coat. These characteristics have helped them survive for centuries in their place of origin, Norway. The addition of the Fjord Horse made Christmas on Star Stable that much more special this year. We had finally received a new friend to help us explore the Valley of the Hidden Dinosaur. Dino Valley travels were put on pause for the remainder of 2014 to leave some room for all of the fun Christmas festivities that were sprinkled through the rest of December, which was wholly appreciated by the community, as most Dinosaur Valley quests took hours to complete. The amount of lore they deliver is very valuable, but it is nice to have a break. On January 14th, 2015, they picked the Dinosaur Valley Spotlight right back up with the release of three new adorable Fjord horses. Just like their previous counterparts, these horses were also sold with the same cultic tack. The new variants included a gorgeous Cremello a sun-kissed red dun, and a unique dark brown gray. 
what can I say? There's a fjord for every player's preference. Oh, how I wish I could tell you more about the storyline of Dinosaur Valley. But unfortunately, from this point, there isn't any story left to be told. There is one period of time where Dinosaur Valley gets an extension, but for that, we must travel three years into the future. September 20th, 2018. It happened to be quite an unfamiliar news article, as it had been published on a Thursday. We were given the information that they had increased the reputation you are able to gain with the cultures through daily quests. Clearly, this wasn't done without reason, though. As they mention in the next paragraph that the Fjord Horses will be leaving Jorvik on October 10th for good. Giving everyone a three-week deadline to make the final purchase on this iconic horse. But not only that, players who haven't reached Dinosaur Valley yet won't get the chance to meet the Coulters. This article came with the announcement of the Generation 3 Fjord Horse. We have become familiar with the concept of the team revamping older generation horses. But rarely does it happen that the older generation counterpart be removed from the game before the debut of the Generation 3. I feel obligated to tell you all that the original Fjord Horse only lasted three and a half years in the game. That is appalling. We still haven't received an explanation for the urgency of their departure. They pleaded in the article that they are going to begin phasing out older generation horses in the future. The reasoning behind this cause of action was, in their words, with each passing year, some content becomes outdated. And we feel it no longer represents the best of what Star Stable can offer. That is valid, but their more recent reasoning is the need to make changes to the game to ensure it can run at the best possible performance. I do not know which cause is more truthful. Maybe there has always been technical motivation behind the removal of these horses. And they're just choosing to be more transparent with their community about what is really going on behind the scenes. This removal ripped out a huge part of Dinosaur Valley's lore. Although, I am satisfied with the way they went about withdrawing the Coulters and the original Fjord horses. Instead of letting the horses rot in the horse market for the remaining three weeks, they actually decided to release a quest explaining where our native friends are going. The quest was released on Wednesday, October 10th, 2018. It followed the unsettling visions of the future Avalon was having about the valley, and he requests your reassurance with the Coulters. When we arrive at the Coulters' camp beside the Icing Gate, for the first time, we are able to see what is behind the gate. A frozen alleyway, which the Coulters enter on their fjords in a hurry. They bid us farewell in silence as we are startled with the sound of a ferocious roar echoing through the valley, possibly from something abominable. We retreat back to Avalon with this new information, foreshadowing that something strange is happening in the valley. This short tease set up so many possibilities for a Dinosaur Valley storyline expansion, and I have patiently waited for over five years for the spotlight to be brought back to this special place. The replacement for the Generation 1 Fjord Horse arrived on October 17th, 2018, one week after the original Fjord's departure. The Generation 3 Norwegian Fjord Horse debuted in three variants, Bay Dunn, Smoky Black Dunn, and Palomino Dunn. More colors were to arrive in the following weeks. They were available for purchase in Veildale and Fort Pinta, and the level requirement was 6. Don't get me wrong, both generations of Fjord are my favorite horses in the game, 
but I was strikingly underwhelmed with Generation 3. They do not have the same stocky build that their Generation 1 counterpart had. I wish that the team could have emulated the cuteness of Generation 1 for this updated version. I am not an expert on horses, so do not take my word for it. But this is the only critique I have of how the breed looks. The rest of my grievances lie within how the launch of this update was executed. I have mentioned this in previous videos, but when the original Fjord horses came out, I was still working overtime to be able to crunch reputation for them. I was so determined to get this horse, and when I finally did, it truly felt like all my hard work had paid off. I felt like I had earned this horse, and this is a feeling I've been trying to chase for a while in Modern Star Stable. Some things come a little too easy to us in the game nowadays. If you want to hear more about my thoughts on the loss of the game's challenge and immersion, I released a documentary in February called The Death of Realism that covers this topic to a higher extent. The history that the original Fjord horses shared with the Calters made them truly special, and I was hoping that they would carry on that legacy with the updated breed. But instead, they were placed in unseemly locations for Pinta, a tropical tourist getaway residing in southern Jorvik, miles away from the snow. And Veildale, closer to the snow, but made available for star riders that have not reached level 15 yet to make sure the horse would sell. I would be less bitter about the Generation 3 Fjord Horse if they had kept the Generation 1 available for purchase once you had established trust with the Coulters. But from a present day perspective, I have no emotional connection to the current Norwegian Fjord Horse. They're just another horse I can buy. All of the story that Dinosaur Valley has to offer may have come to a close, but I want to leave no stone unturned. Which is why we're going to spend the next few minutes speculating on what could be arriving in the future for this freezing cold crater. Theories handcrafted by the Star Stable community started to spread as early as 2016. Theories revolving around the mysterious character of Nick Stoneground. As we have come to learn, Nick Stoneground is a world-famous adventurer who is still on his expedition in Dinosaur Valley. He sports this very cozy poncho to get him through the harsh cold of the valley, but he also carries this incredibly strange fridge around with him. The fridge is attached by a chain, and it is constantly levitating. Not to mention, it is surrounded by this aura of pink stars. The same pink stars that constantly revolve around Fripp, and orbit around the Pandoric cracks. The theorists also speculated about the four fridge doors located on Jorvik. One in Moorland, Veildale, Golden Hills, and Greendale. If you look at these fridge door locations on a map, they all connect into the shape of a star. Well, almost. A fifth point is needed for the star to be complete. And that fifth point is located in an unreleased part of the map. Many have theorized that this area will be Mystic Valley. They believe that Nick Stoneground's levitating fridge could be connected to these fridge doors. This is such a popular theory and a phenomenon that has been active for years. I'm absolutely on the edge of my seat to see how it'll play out. Star Stable has already leaned into the fridge door theories. Around 2018, they implemented a feature where if you ride over the fridge doors, one of their most intense and creepy soundtracks begin to play. If you remain on the fridge door, you will be able to hear faint construction or other various machinery underground. Full credit goes to Ida Lindman on YouTube 
for posting about this theory way back in 2016. This video alone has accumulated over 10,000 views. We're waiting for an explanation, SSO. With the arrival of every new area in Star Stable, leave some room for extension. Rarely does Star Stable ever conclude a story. Well, because they have the opportunity to evolve since it is an online game. When Golden Hills Valley was open to the public way back in June of 2012, there was a road alongside the Witch's Swamp that had been blocked off by piles of rubble, leaving us to wonder what could be discovered further along the road. It gave us something to sit and think with. Seven years later, Star Stable reconstructs that entire area for the purpose of a brand new story quest, the Light Ride. They crafted a brand new trail ride surrounding Golden Leaf Stable and Cape West Fishing Village to celebrate the Golden Hills graphic update. This area later becomes reused seasonally for a Halloween activity, the Haunted Trail Ride. And they had finally revamped and named the area behind those piles of rubble, Marching Hust Castle. This place still gives us something to look forward to, as it is not open to the public yet. Let me give you another example. After completing the bridge to the Harvest Counties, you make your way through Greendale Forest en route to Jorvik Stables. The first thing you see when you find your way out of the forest is two locked iron gates. What was beyond those two iron gates was later revealed to be Epona, an area expanding beyond the Harvest Counties. Although, we would not see Epona for another two years. Wildwoods is an extension of Mistfall, South Hoof is an extension of Epona, but what was Dinosaur Valley's extension? While exploring Dinosaur Valley, there is one solid trail you can follow. If you are able to reach the end of the trail, you'll notice a blockade made of snow. Back when Dinosaur Valley was first released, if you approach this blockade, you would be greeted with the message, the road to Ashland is blocked. What is Ashland? Could this be an upcoming project? A new branch of Dinosaur Valley? We asked ourselves that question nine years ago. And since then, a few of our questions have been answered. From as early as 2015, players have found ways to bypass unreleased areas and explore what hasn't been publicized. This includes the mystifying Ashland. Unlike most unreleased areas at the time, it would appear that Ashland had actually been pretty constructed. Behind the piles of snow, lied a volcanic ruin crawling with sulfur. If you explored far enough, past the thorns and branches, you would be met with an abandoned house. The only living structure for miles. Beside the house, rested what appeared as an active volcano. The volcano was accessible if you traveled through an invisible wall. Once you had made your way into the crater, you could see the lava. The bowl of lava was accompanied by gusts of smoke. It was impressive how much detail Star Stable had already put into an unreleased area. We never could have imagined a place like this inside of Dinosaur Valley. So, what happened to Ashland? After nine whole years, rumors started to spread around in the community. A majority of people are claiming that Ashland has been abandoned due to Star Stable's new management. We have fallen under the impression that Star Stable's priorities are not with the volcanic wasteland. It doesn't help that Dinosaur Valley has remained untouched for all these years, environmentally and in the story. Many players have picked up on how out of place Ashland would seem now in the current story, seeing as the lore has drastically changed so much over the years. I believe if places like Devil's Gap and Marching Hust Castle can be shown recognition in the modern day, 
then we will soon live to see the day Ashland gets its grand release. If you still remain an active player of Star Stable Online, I'm sure you know that whenever the Rainbow Festival comes around, Nick Stoneground's niece and novice adventurer, Mika Stoneground, proudly host the occasion. There have been quests around this time where Mika has shared her adventurer journal with us, and within that journal holds a very noteworthy piece of information. She logged an expedition she had embarked on with her uncle, where they explored Dinosaur Valley and ended up on the same winding path we all have trailed. When they were met with a roadblock, Nick had solemnly turned to Mika and said, The road to Ashland is blocked. This gave us the incentive that Star Stable may be still thinking about Ashland like we are. Something I believe that is so unique and immersive about Dinosaur Valley would have to be the cold tolerance feature. It makes perfect sense, and games like Breath of the Wild and Genshin Impact have the exact same mechanic when entering the harshest, most cold areas of their respective maps. This made for a great excuse to sell horses with this exclusive function, to be tolerant of the freezing weather when scavenging through Dinosaur Valley. And I'm sure most of you know that this rule was demolished on May 19th, 2021. Their explanation was wanting to make sure all of our horses could explore Dinosaur Valley at their fullest, instead of punishing them for not having cold tolerant coats. The team also added that in future, they would rather incorporate attributes in a fun and beneficial way. This decision ruffled quite a lot of feathers, because on my end, I find it difficult to find the realism in exploring an everlasting frozen tundra on an Arabian horse without struggle. This change also erased the uniqueness cold tolerant horses shared, much like the North Swedish horse or the Icelandic horse that are actually built for these climates in real life. It is bad enough that Dinosaur Valley is an abandoned project, but erasing the remaining charm the area has left was a nail in the coffin. Allow me to recite all of the horses that were made under this feature. <clears throat> the North Swedish horse, the Norwegian Fjord horse, Generation 3 Irish Cobb, the Icelandic Horse, the Halflinger, the Jorvik Wild Horse, and then it just got strange towards the end. Generation 3 Frisian, the Finn Horse, and the Generation 3 Arabian. I hope that Star Stable decides to reverse this decision in the future. It would be a great addition when Dinosaur Valley becomes revisited. We are nearing towards the end, and before I send you off, it is only appropriate if I tell you about the legend of the Ice Witch. Have you ever noticed this strange looking cave tucked in an unnoticeable corner on the frozen lakes of Dinosaur Valley? This cave goes by many names. In the context of the Ice Witch, let's call it Isendel. It is also known as Garnock's Mouth. Isendel just so happens to be the eternal prison of the Ice Witch. This cell is resonated with dark magic. Just staring at it for too long is enough to drive people insane. In Jorvik, it's been rumored through ancient folk tales that the cultures, peaceful people who live an isolated life beyond the Isengate, answer to a higher power. Allegedly, the cultures are a part of a religion that serves a queen with a heart of ice. It is difficult to determine whether this is by their own choice or not. Seeing how close they are located to Garnock's fury, they happen to be exposed to all sorts of dark energy. It wouldn't be irrational to think that the cultures are being manipulated by the ice witch in some sort of way. 
But how can we believe that the Ice Witch has bad intentions? Because the Ice Witch is rumored to be the Dark Rider, Katya. A lot of evidence points to Katya, especially ever since her character rework. Her official symbol displays three jagged teeth, much like the front of Isendel. Katya's relation to the cultures is evident when you observe her new outfit, as the patterns and style are very similar to the ancient threadwork of the cultures. And how she was capable of controlling the cultures goes back to her long history of brainwashing individuals to her advantage. Much like what we see with James in Starshine Legacy 4 and his visions in Star Stable Online. The cultures are the first humans to have set foot on Yorvik. They are the earliest people. How could they have worshipped the Ice Witch from the very beginning if Katya is just a mere teenager? While it is quite obvious that Katya acts like a teenager and looks like a teenager, all of the Dark Riders have a hint of immortality in one way or another. We have already established that Mr. Sands is immortal and has gone under several aliases in the past such as John Sandman and Owen D. Sands. And it just so happens that this is the case for his strongest allies too, the Dark Riders. When Katya is first introduced in one of Star Stable's official books, Soul Riders, Yorvik Calling, Mr. Sands asks her what name she has assigned for herself this time. And she responds, Katya. On a more obvious note, we have recently been given time to spend with the revamped Katya through the Rainbow Festival. An annual event hosted in the beginning of June to celebrate Pride Month. But it happens to have its own quests and storyline to tag along with it. I mentioned previously that Mika Stoneground, Nick Stoneground's niece, is the host of the renowned Rainbow Festival. And in 2022, Star Stable took the opportunity to introduce the new Katya through the Rainbow Festival. At the beginning of the festivities, it had been revealed that something was draining the color from the Cloud Kingdom, which was unusual. A land full of vibrant color and rainbows, reduced to an unsaturated realm. Mika tasked us with finding the source of the dilemma. Once we returned to Yorvik, we noticed a drop in temperature. Caught in the middle of a blizzard, with nothing but the sound of eerie violin chords. Once we have tracked down the culprit using the musical notes, it was revealed to be Katya who made Yorvik paralyzingly cold. So it is true that Katya has some sort of ability to use ice magic. And I doubt it was a coincidence that Star Stable brought Katya into the spotlight through an event hosted by Mika Stoneground. Nothing has been explicitly said about the Ice Witch yet, but it is safe to assume that the Dark Rider Katya may be the legendary Ice Witch of Isendel. This theory has been a community passion project for years now, so I must give credit to the very talented and dedicated thinkers who helped support my argument. Eleanor Nightwalker and the Star Stable subreddit. I hope you're surviving the cold. While this has been fun, we must bring this chapter of Dinosaur Valley to a close. I'm grateful that Dinosaur Valley has remained environmentally untouched as I can still cling on to the nostalgia I hold for this place. Yet, I can't wait to see what potential may be unlocked with an update. I just want all of these mysteries that have surrounded the valley to be solved. It's so electrifying to think about. Tell me about what memory or feature that you value most about Dinosaur Valley in the comments, and theories about what you believe is next for this place. If you've enjoyed spending time with me today, consider subscribing to my YouTube channel to catch my upcoming documentaries just like this one. If you're a sucker for nostalgia like me, go give my Instagram page a follow. I'm beginning to post exclusive nostalgia content over there weekly. I promise I'm getting more active on Instagram. 
You all have helped me pass the halfway point of our 3,000 subscriber goal. I'm eternally grateful. I'm preparing to show you all a new side of Kitty Spiderweb once we reach the milestone. Stay frosty. This has been Kitty Spiderweb, signing out.